All right, guys, so and welcome back. Time for game three. Team Bizarre once again, Septum 7. It's a best of five series. This is, in fact, not the last game of this series. Unusual for us, but exciting stuff. I want to see how these teams are going to look to adapt because now both teams have kind of seen what each other can actually do. It was a full proper game. There was no disconnects from an early upset. And Septum 7 fought back well, especially given the fact they had a substitute come in to help them out. Yeah, super sub. Uh, Ducky after that last game, he really needs a pat on the back, able to switch in and just be ready, switched on 100% ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, something that I'd like to point out, the difference between the first and the second games, look at the draft difference, right? They went for Ducky on the Hunter in the solo lane, why did they do that? It's safe especially Neath, he can clear. It's just a no pressure situation for Ducky. He can just sit in that lane, spirit arrow, unravel, run away. He doesn't need to trade. And especially into well, a Vermont matchup, he's he's just fine. You know, he's totally fine in that matchup. Well, that's uh, Bologna first pick. It took a little while to get there, but Athena Sylvanas locked in on the side of Septum 7. So looking for a big tanky frontline setup, Sylvanas is going to be the support for this match. The question is going to be, where are they going to put Athena? Will they put it on Ducky over in that solo lane? Will it be jungle for the Pikachu? I know the Pikachu, I, you know, I've watched these guys play for a long, long time. Pikachu tends to favor the Assassins a little bit more. Bologna kind of being the odd one out for that one. We saw Kabrakken as well, so... What was that Kabrakken last game? That was Dark Yodi Cake, excuse me. Confusing these teams once again, but we got back to where it was. I don't know. There's some potential. They could stick them in the jungle. They could go mid lane. I don't expect that too much, but... They have some options with where they can put Athena. Yeah, they, they really do have some options. I mean, you, we did discuss a lot of the last game that... Guardians in the jungle don't really make... I mean, they do make the benefit from the fact that they the bonus XP on Guardians gets them really tanky really quickly, right? The, the health scaling is the best in the game. But the problem is that they generally lack clear without assistance somewhere else, right? That's the major problem for them. But... Athena, she can run multiple lanes. She could, yeah. if, if they really want, they can run a mid lane. They've already picked up Scylla, so that's not going to be the case. But... They can run her there. Uh, the Athena is just so versatile that they can opt to do whatever the heck they want. As interesting as well as counter bands do come through, it's going to be Geb banned up by Septum 7. They want to really push Team Bizarre back down into that uh, support tier list. They could still look for Bacchus, Ares, uh, Kumbakarna. There's some options still available, but it's not going to be kind of the top t like S A tier supports coming out on that side of the board. It's gonna be Apollo locked in, and they're not too concerned about the fact that on her is just bandaged. Like, uh, he is, alright, whatever, pick Apollo up. Bacchus will be hovered over right now. My one concern looking at this conversation right now, they may be lacking on the hard crowd control side of things. They have the Eagles Rally, they have the stun off of Agni, but after that, it's yeah, okay, I'm looking. They have Neath with the World Weaver as well as the Spirit Hour Root. So I might have not formulated this thought well enough in my head before I said it. But the front line is potentially going to be a little bit lacking although okay medusa was getting hovered over it just got swapped to sun wukong and locked in it's looking a little bit better than it was in my head here just a moment ago yeah and sun wukong's passive it can it can really create some space for the rest of the team here you know plus 10 protections when below uh 35 percent so that's that's absolutely fantastic you know, he, he can just suddenly go from being, okay, I'm taking a lot of damage, or I'm not taking so much anymore. That 10 protections, especially early on, can mean so, so much. It means he can box and lane incredibly well. Uh, Magic Cudgel, good for clearing waves. This is a really, really nice pressure lane coming out from Steffi Beefy. If he wants to press it, he can then rotate into the jungle as well, which is so important. Wukong can push lane, get in the jungle, put pressure down. He's really versatile across whatever the heck they want him to do. and He's just a fantastic pick for this, this patch. Oh, Fenrir is going to be the final pickup, Septon 7 locking that one in as the god trading has now completed. It is going to be Ducky playing that Fenrir over in the soul lane with Athena in the jungle game played by the Pikachu. This isn't a bad setup, I like the team comp that Septon 7 have drafted themselves. Fenrir is always going to be Fenrir, Ragnarok can be one of the most frustrating abilities in the game as far as ultimate's concerns. Like, I grab somebody and they immediately beads that in my jaw, I wasn't really able to capitalize on it. But, they also can then say, you know what, the grab didn't work. Or the, rather, the uh, the bite didn't work on Fenrir. Sylvanas has the grabs. Athena has the taunt. Scylla has the sickum. There's so much other crowd control to follow up. They have to be careful. Team Bazaar have a lot of crowd control of their own. Their front line with that Sun Wukong pickup for Steefy Beefy kind of solidified their front line a little bit. I was a little concerned initially. Yeah, Bellona can be nice. But sometimes you don't necessarily build her full on tank. She can still kind of hold her own the front line. But she's not necessarily the big tanky front lines you sometimes see out of other warriors. No, I... You know, she's, she's 
versatile as well. What I really, really like about Bologna is that she has enough gold in this jungle, right? That she can go damage if she needs to. She can go tanky if that's what her team requires. You know, some Wukong, yeah, you can run him a little bit more damage and you can run Bologna a little bit more tanky in the early game, depending upon what you want. If you're not both aggressive, that's totally perfectly permissible as well, especially in this jungle. But she's just able to do whatever the heck she wants. Then she gets bonus power, bonus protections, and everything in a circle for her team. Yep. And a stun when she presses R, uh, presses four. Sorry, that's fantastic. That's one of the best things you can do. Versus R, who binds things to R? That's just a silly key to use. That's the reload button, and you don't reload and smite. Even if you're Neath on the Buccaneath skin and you have a gun, you just get, oh, reload automatically. It's magical bullets, and it's lovely. That said, guys, we're going to cut to a quick little break, get ourselves set up and ready to go into this match. It's game number three out of this best of five series, currently tied up one to one. We have at least two more to go. It's going to be the question of who gets that one game up advantage and can possibly close the series out in game number four. We find the answer to that out in just a little bit as we get to the match. So stick around and enjoy the music. All right, guys, hello and welcome back. Team Bizarre facing off against Septum 7. This is going to be game three out of this best of five series. No one can win this one quite yet, although one of these teams will kind of put themselves in victory conditions with one more game after this to close the series out. So it's going to be an important one. The entire series, an important one as the winner of this series will find themselves with an invite to the SPL relegations in a few weeks where they could potentially find themselves sitting in the SPL on the back of a victory there. Yeah, not only that, minimum of $1,500 richer. I, I could really use $1,500. Put me in, guys. Sub me in. Sub me in, Septum7. Sub me in, Bizarre. I'll take your wins. But no, seriously, these teams are actually playing for their lives right now because once they get through this game, the top two teams from each region, right, are going to relegations. Yeah. So all they have to do is win this game. That's why this game is a best of five and the grand finals are only a best of three, right? Because this game means so much more. Yep, it's going to be an important one some of these, for some of these players as well. This is going to be potentially the most important games of Smite they have played in their lives. Possibly the most important games, period. Now, some of these players occasionally Smite have played uh, professionally or semi-professionally in other games as well. But right now, these guys, whether or not they started out the Challenger Cup with the intentions of looking at the hopes, uh, you know, the real, real hope. And the real possibility of getting to the SPL is, you know, anybody's guess. But nevertheless, they are here. They are on the threshold of the SPL right now. Or the threshold of the threshold to the SPL, I guess I should say. Because they still have to get through the relegation matches. But for now, at least, was that an invade on the left-hand side? They were looking for it, but JoJo does have a purple buff around him right now. Dirk. Okay. Not entirely sure what happened in the right lane. Do you know what happened in the right lane? I have no clue what happened in the right lane. That is an unfortunate disconnect coming out. I'm just wondering how he could have died to tower when he was pushed, or was he died? I think he died to the minions. Anyway, either way, Dark UDK is, is going into know. the process where he, where he DC'd, and he's died, I think, to minions, so... Um, well, that's happened. But Pikachu at level 2 is rotating out. Something I'd like to point out on the left-hand side coming through from Septum 7's point of view at this point in time, they just did double buff start. Yep. Right? They beat their opponents to lane. What does that mean? They shoved that first lane entirely under tower and denied Neath gold at this very early portion. Something that is nigh impossible to do. Yeah, it's definitely rough for sure. Uh, otherwise, taking a look at what's going on in this map. Mid lane, Death Panther doing okay in a 1v2 situation. Not really too much wave clear early on out of the duo of the matchup of Athena and Scylla. They'll go ahead and now there's a kill coming back to answer back for Ducky finding kill on the Steefy Beefy. That will certainly help things out. Up against Sun Wukong, he does have that blue stone pendant. One of the few uh, gods still picking that one, uh, that item up in general. But that early kill means no mana buff. Ducky's going to have an advantage in lane early on. And then essentially he forced a teleport pickup by Steefy because let's face it, with the two active slots available, we, uh, teleport is definitely a top tier one for those warriors in solo lane. But picking up early, he did force that to go on cooldown already. Yeah, and it's a 240 second cooldown, but Steefy also knows that he can't miss out XP in this lane, right? What does Fenrir do really, really well when he's ahead? Continues to get further and further ahead. Steefy can't fall behind on XP on the Song Wukong, and as soon as he gets into this game, he'll be totally fine. So he just knows that he needs to do that. Yep. Buys the TP, burns it. It's, it's just a necessary evil. Assuming you can hold on to safe, uh, safely in this lane, but right there, one set of poking harass from Ducky, and already Steefy is back down to half health. He does not have the luxury of lifesteal regeneration off of his kit. 
So he has to be careful in the lane. Where is Seething Howl? If he has points in the duck, he can look at Ragnarok. Level 5 comes on out. Leave him kill. Brutalized. Latched on. One more in hand. Can Ducky find it? Could find the kill. Potion's ticking. The Unchained will miss. Steefy might live this engagement. He's trying to get away. Cooldown's a little bit off. Four seconds on that Brutalized. But Steefy's a little out of range. He will survive. But likely going to be forced back to base very, very shortly. Yeah, and he's got no TP this time around. He can't even buy that left-hand side of things. Uh, Itaxi and Jojo are uh, getting harassed out. They're getting focused down, and they're getting pushed underneath tower. Mid lane, there was the dive in coming through from Dark ODK and Death Panther. They're looking for it, but Dazzle wants kills. He's, he's popped the I'm a monster. Gonna be forced to clear out minions with it. Oh, what a waste of an I'm a monster. No, that's actually okay. Yeah. It's a rough situation, right lane, it's Steepy Beefy on a bit of a bad spot. I He didn't use the Stormsoul Cloud to regen, that was a strictly potions being popped one after the other to get his health bar back up to safe levels. But look at Ducky where he is right now, he's not worried about Steepy. There's a stun coming, Unchained just chunked Steepy Beefy for around a third of his health bar. Oh, mid lane though, does is managing to get a kill, sorry, that's left hand side of things, on towards Ataxi, that's a really nice rotation. They got pressure, they shove things up in the mid lane and they get over there. Yep, so with that, a little bit of back and forth, right lane, Dark Yoda K looking for the kill on the ducky, trying to relieve some of the pressure by... Uh, ooh, Steepy actually looking, uh, almost killed off, looking for the Ragnarok grab, neither to find someone, will back off, not gonna find a kill, but a 1v2 situation. Not only did they not find a kill to ducky, he was only about two-thirds health when that situation started, but almost found a turnaround kill himself. Yeah, that's a really nice sort of setup. What? Second set of buffs are starting to come through. They're just starting to spawn and whatnot, and that means that mid camps could be up shortly. Septum 7 not utilizing as much back camp pressure and control this time around. Jojo in a little bit of trouble. Left hand lane right now. Boxing back and forth, trying to use the minions to stay alive as long as possible. Bacchus is on his way to help him out. They could turn, turn this kill around. The stun about to come out. We'll find it. Lofez overstaying his welcome. One more hit. We'll find this kill. Can they lock it down? Secure it. They're looking for it. Jojo finds it on the back of a brief turnaround by Lopez, putting him in range. He will get brought down in the end. Yeah, finally, and picked up, and that's that's totally fantastic. That's some nice wins early on. I mean, Neath, you expect Neath to be winning up against the Apollo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Apollo does have early game wave clear issues. So beautiful. Well, evidently, beautiful, as its name does uh, lend it to be, it's not beautiful as far as wave clear is concerned. It's probably, it, Apollo probably has the worst wave clear of any of the hunters, maybe Shibalanke being on the, uh, a little bit lower, but even then, we're not seeing up, him up against Shibalanke. He's up against Aneath, who has very good wave clear between the Unravel and that Spirit Arrow, or backflip into a Spirit Arrow as well, to just detonate it and hit the entire wave for extra damage. There's very good wave clear on that Neath, and for the time being, things are reasonably even. But the stacking items were just completed. Transcendence, a lot more power. Whereas Devourer's Golems, yeah, you get some lifesteal. But Neath, as a kind of a caster-based hunter, can look for some big plays on the back of that. Steefy is just in a world of her in this right-hand side. Ducky's the sub. That's something to keep in the back of your mind yeah. as well. Ducky is a sub here. And he's winning so brutally, but this is what a Fenrir can do. Sun Wukong, though, he's going to scale incredibly into this mid and late game, and... The only thing Fenrir is going to bring is beads and a second assassin. So whether, I mean, well, they do have Athena, you know, Pikachu is mm -hmm. immune to Athena, so he's going to be more tanky. So it does allow Ducky to go after a more aggressive build. Yeah, if Septim 7 get themselves up to a strong early game start, the potential for Team Bizarre to have a real, real, real rough time fighting back into it is a real worry for those guys. And even now, looking how they're going to lock down and start to set up these fights. They have Bacchus, a big burst initiator, not really much lockdown, Belch of the Gods. It's... it's oh, left-hand than... side, though. Lofez has been jumped on towards, and Pikachu come through with the ultimate, but they did burn the Bacchus ultimate, and Nice still has hers at the moment, so World Weaver's going to get channeled here, and they got to block off, but it all went mid. Yep, Dars are not going to be brought down now, and the burn's still ticking, but not going to be nearly enough damage to secure the kill. Right hand lane, Steefy forced up in the Somersault Cloud once again, that level advantage, help him out a little bit as the kill comes on out, Ragnarok one munch to the back of the head, will bring down Sun Wukong for another kill, Ducky is huge right now, looking for another kill, Dark Yoda K put himself in a bad spot, Pikachu with a taunt, Eagles Rally forces the beads off of Ducky, but the reach passive off of Pikachu finds that kill. They need to start shutting down Ducky now because he's racing 301, highest level in the game, most gold in the game by a pretty huge amount. And he still hasn't left lane. 
Steefy can't really fight him in a 1v1 situation. Even when somebody else comes back in, he is more than happy to fight them 1v2. Steefy needs to clear away with the cudgel and then get the heck out of there. He needs to just back up, take back camps. But look at this, right? Death Panther's just taking them on the right hand side. How important this is to a mid laner? Huge. He needs that XP, right? Can get himself ahead, can get himself, you know, XP wise, he can dump a lot of damage down. The more levels he gets into that ultimate, is just huge for an Agni. We all know this. Agni, more bombs. More bombs means more damage. And it requires levels to get there, but they've dropped the ultimate. Um, Mazu did connect. Darzer finds the kill. Dark Yard once again coming and looking to answer back. Well, again, 1v2 situation. Bedek's case here. Look at the level advantages right now. It's three to four levels in that mid lane, lane engagement. Across the board, for that matter, as well, the level lead is really starting to grow for 7 7. They're not only finding kills, but when they're finding the kills, they're denying farm on the back of them. Right side again, Steefy Beef, you're going to manage to interrupt the Brutalize with the Tiger Stance. But you know, Ragnarok was forced. Small little gain coming out for him. And now they're looking for the counter gank. He can look to leap away in a couple seconds with the Unchained. Defender Limbs come in, they could look for kills instead. Yeah, and they're actually going to dive back in on towards this one. They've got the ultimate. Ducky did get whacked up by the World Weaver and will get killed off. But now it's on towards Dark K, and he's not very healthy. And Pikachu might be able to secure this one. Not quite. He's just an Athena after all. Yep, that was a bit of a rough spot for them coming into that one. Uh, Ducky... The World Weaver dropped in on that fight as well. It was not enough to stop him from getting that first initial kill. And that's a situation they have to look to deal with going forward in this matchup. How do we shut down Fenrir? Because right now, one just in the soul lane, he is getting massively, massively farmed. Once he starts joining up with team fights, he's shredding a warrior apart that quickly. Could you imagine if that was instead that Neath or that Agni who have no protection to speak of? But at least they have mobility. That's their only, you know, redeeming factor. The Brutalize trouble here will for follow them. Unchained can close that gap back down. Ragnarok yeah. will force the bees, and the bees is down. Well, he's, they're not going to be in a happy place very shortly. It's the stomach of uh, Fenrir. And, uh, you know, they'll maybe find Tyr's hand. I'm sure he'll be happy about that. But otherwise, not a happy place. And the other problem as well, as well is as soon as that uh, they get dragged all the way back through a Ragnarok, look at the layered CC that they can really yeah. use as well. They've got Sikkim, they've got uh, the Verdant Growth, you know, they've got the Grass, Nature's Grass, they've got Wrath of Terror, they've got all these abilities to lock them down, the Taunt as well from Athena. If, if Beads aren't online, when he, they, people get grabbed up, they're dead. It's, they're, they're just dead. That was a 90% combo from Ducky onto Steefy Beefy. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Look at the XP difference. He's up. He's up by a whole level. And Ducky's just about to get another... Well, he's just going to two levels. He's up. He's just about to go up by, you know, two full levels because he shoved another wave underneath that tower. That, that statement's very much perspective-based. He's only up a level and just That's chunked close. down Sun Wukong for 90% of his health bar. Only and look at level. this. Look at the tower damage with one sort of wave that Ducky can put through. Left hand side of things, Pikachu's gonna get torn on and set up things for the rest of the team, and they've now got what they want. Look at the grasp on towards Dark DK. At least he's got the beads for the Sikkim, and that'll get him the heck out of there, but Death Panther wanted a little bit something else. Darza was the focus for the world. We have the blink from Pikachu. He wants kills, but they're not quite gonna find it, and neither will the Spirit Arrow, but Ducky's found Steefy Beefy again. Beefy, why are you fighting Ducky? <laughs> Ducks. You, it's a killer duck in that soul lane. A, a monkey, tiger, boar can't do anything about it. Darzer in a bit of a bad spot. Judge are trying to answer back some kills to the left-hand side of the board, but not having much luck. Darzer may be brought down. There's a Scourge with this arm. Judge will secure that kill. Answer back, finally. But look what is still going on left-hand side of the map. The rest of Septum 7 bring down the Gold Fury. Leaves your mid laner for a 1500 Gold Fury pickup, especially when it's so difficult to secure safely these days. That's a big overall victory for Septum 7. Again, that's uh, that doesn't even include the fact that there was a kill in that solo lane once again for a Ducky. Yeah, huge. Ducky's just like, yo, I'm, I'm big. What's up? Uh, look at the gold difference between the two. At 11 minutes and 30 seconds in the game, there is 1,700 gold between those two solo laners. There's three levels between those two solo laners. This is a long mountain and a long road to get back into this game from Steefy Beefy. This this yeah. feels very, very casual game-esque. Ah, casual game-esque. And Ducky's just doing such a good job. This is, this is super sub-territory. What, the way you look to play these lanes at when you find yourself in this situation, so you know, I'm going to just freeze the lane at my tower. 
and just farm endlessly in that situation. The reason being is like there, it's far extended, especially the tier one tower being down. I'll be nice and safe at my tier two tower. We've seen Ducky is not concerned about a 2v1 situation. If someone comes to gank, he does not care. He will look for a kill because he knows the Pikachu will be right behind the Defender Olympus to help him out. Worst case, he trades one for one. We saw last time, he was already pretty far ahead. It was only a 400 gold kill in the end. It wasn't like a huge, I'm 10 kills up, I'm gonna give somebody 750 gold. If I trade back one to one, it's kind of worth it. Death Panther mid lane. One, two, three combo is going to result in a dead Death Panther. The pole, Dark Yodi, Dark Yodi K. I'm a monster. Connects him to that one for almost another kill, but not quite. Damage come down. Looking for the counter engage. Lofez is going to land down, and he's at least going to pick up Dark Yodi K. And then on the backside, Stevie Beefy's still in a world of trouble. At least he's got the ultimate to get him out this time around. But a Spirit Arrow won't get Jojo far enough away. He will get the backflip off. The Brutalize didn't land, and the chase potential isn't there. But they've still got five members to continue this from the side of Septum 7. There's only three, and that means mid lane tower number one. Yeah, it's looking like right now, Septum 7 looking for kills, tier 1, mid tower will fall, tier 2, very much at threat, they have to kill off a couple guys, low on health bars, they have no fire giant buff, but they're going to look for kills, nevertheless, Lofez finds that kill, Pikachu tang it up, more than happy to do so, as Edix will find a double belly flop knock up, health bars are very low, Ducky going to use the Unchained to leap away, can they find kills on the retreat by Septum 7, this is the opportunity, but they can't get in range to lock down, Darts are oh! another one, as does Lofez! Oh! And they're not quite done yet. They can do whatever the heck they want from here as well. Lofez is still full health. Look at that. He is 100% health. He's barely taking a lick of damage. Look at that mid tower. They just crush through one tower and three quarters of a second tower. They're missing the right hand tower. Ducky's secure that one. And they haven't even touched the left hand tower yet. When they got onto that, it's just, it's gone. It's gone. That's what Apollo does to towers. It's just gone. Mid camps yeah. they've got decent control over now. They've got decent control over the next. Gold Fury, this is a slippery slope for Team Bizarre to be on. They went one game up, but uh, it's a long way back when you're 2-1 two, uh, two, down. Look how game one went as well. It wasn't a case of like, oh, you know, we, we lost because... Of, okay, they lost because it was Disconnect. But the Disconnect, how much of a contributing factor was it to that defeat? Was it a case of like we saw now, game two, uh, game two they won... It, fairly well this game however they're really getting control of this game early on and looking to roll just run away with this entirely game one 4v5 they fought well left side a little bit of an engagement going on jojo taunted back in low on the health bar over the wall i'm a monster looking for it. it's up it's all we're gonna look for damage and duck yoda k and said not gonna connect I, I like the gusto coming out there from darzo looking for the over the wall kill for the hype play but unfortunately jojo just didn't come close enough to the wall didn't cooperate. Yeah, and Jojo's smarter than that. They had ward coverage out there, but they get the blink torn, and Jojo's gonna die just absolutely immediately. The Taxi's not much better off himself as well, and mid lane they get the inner tower as well, and Ducky can box out and trade with Steefy Beefy, all happy. And now, he can look to dive as well, and they can get this second tower in the left hand lane. Ducky's zoning is that's what he's supposed to be doing, but he's more than happy to find a kill in the back of it. We'll grab Dark Yodicate, drag him back to his team, and pick up that kill. Tier 2 tower. They're not worried about it. They're looking for kills right now. They have a strong lead that they can very much do this safely. Surrender vote popping up right now. It's a best of five series. Surrender vote's not the worst thing in a best of five, but this is, is game three. This is an early game one surrender vote, and it will well, go through. This isn't the worst thing in the world. Team Bizarre still need to look for a full-on reset. Okay, you know what? That one didn't go well, guys. It didn't go well at all. Let's look at the bounce back in the next game. We, they have to win two now. We're going into game number four. Step and seven are in the position to take this series overall if they can find another one after this. Yeah, it's just one game separating them from a spot at competing for relegation spots from SPL. They are one game away from being able to get there. Will nerves creep in? That's the big fact to, to consider. And if nerves are going to creep in in a game here where it you know, it's it's just moving on, getting into the SPL is a bigger game than even this one. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, right? So this next game is very, very crucial to come through from the guys on the side of Septum 7. Well, both these teams are going to be crucial for a Team Bizarre need to win the next one to actually keep themselves in the series. On the other hand, like you said, Septum 7 can close out the series 3 one overall and go on to the finals well at which point well there's some cash in line but let's face it this is the important one overall they want that spot going forward into the spl relegations 
So with that, we'll find out exactly who will come back, who will win, who will lose, who will do whatever they need to do to find their respective team's victory in this next game, guys. It's going to be game four out of this best of five series for the semifinals for the European Challenger Cup Grand Finals. We'll be back with that in just a little bit, so stick around. We'll have a few in just a few.